Hi everybody, it's Lori Watzel here with the next installment of Tech Tip Tuesdays. And this week's Tech Tip is going to focus on an iPad app called ScreenShop. And it's an app that will allow you and your students to create screencasts. Before I get into the details, I am right now on the Tech Tip Tuesdays website. I'm in the iPad apps area where you'll find the link to this Tech Tip as soon as I'm done recording it. But you'll notice I have in the description a sentence there that says, before watching this tech tip, click here to watch TechSmith's What is ScreenChomp video first. If you haven't already done that, I would highly recommend that you do. This is a link to a YouTube video that was created by TechSmith, who are the makers of ScreenChomp. And it's a really good overview of what ScreenChomp does and what possibilities it has for the curriculum. Once you've watched this, now it's time to take a look at the details of how it works. I'm going to go ahead and search for ScreenChomp. You're looking for the little greenish yellow guy, and I'm going to go ahead and tap on it and get started. And ScreenChomp um, is a pretty easy interface. This very first icon on the bottom is your backgrounds icon, choosing from a photo library that you have on your iPad. You also have the ability to choose from Dropbox if you have any, any images or photos saved in your Dropbox. You can take a photo directly with your iPad and use that as your background. Or if you've put a background on there that isn't going to work for you, you can remove it. So giving an example, I'm going to choose from my library and I'm going to choose this coordinate grid right here. And this is just an image I grabbed from the internet and you can do that easily by going to the internet clicking and holding down on an image and saying adding it to your camera roll. This one's too small. It's not going to fit my needs, so all I need to do is tap on that icon again and click on remove background. You also have the ability to use these pens. These pens have three different widths and you can choose a variety of colors. All three of them essentially do exactly the same thing. So I can mark up my screen and make the annotations and explanations that I need. Over on the right hand side here, left to the record button, is a spot eraser. So this is going to be used when you want to erase just one section of what you've written. The icon directly next to the backgrounds icon is the remove all or clear board. And all you need to do is hold it down for about three seconds and it will wipe your board clean. Now that you know what all of the icons do, it's time to give you an example of what ScreenShop's capabilities are. Before I hit record, I want to make sure I add my background. So I'm going to go ahead and click on background, choose from library. I'm going to go to my camera roll, and I found this coordinate grid as an image on the internet that I think is going to work much better for me. And if you notice, there's three panels here. So this is actually a scrollable kind of environment. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and move it down to my second panel and I'm going to include this coordinate grid into my screencast. I'm going to click done and now that I've clicked I'm done I'm ready to record. When I click on record it's going to count me down three two one and as you can see it is recording me and my voice and you can see the counter in the upper right hand corner growing. Let's pretend that I am a math teacher and I'm trying to teach the students about graphing lines and slope intercept form. So I come up with an equation y equals 2x plus 1 and I'm going to explain to the students exactly how I would go about graphing this. This is why I put the coordinate grid on the second portion of my screen because I want to have enough room to work and write and then I can just scroll with two fingers and continue my screencast from there. I'm going to go ahead and start explaining my, my thought process. With the students, we've talked about the fact that this 1 is my B value and it's my Y intercept. The 2 is my M value and it is my slope. So if I'm going to graph this line, I'm going to graph a line with a Y intercept of 1 and a slope of 2 and a slope of 2 would be written as 2 over 1 interpreted as rise over 1 so 2 up and 1 to the right. I would of course do a much better job explaining this with the students. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and actually graph this line. 
I'm going to grab my blue marker and it's medium width, perfect, and I'm going to plot my y-intercept of 1. As you can probably tell, I am using a stylus and it certainly wouldn't hurt to use a stylus depending upon your situation. My slope told me to go up 2 and to the right 1 and I'm going to continue that pattern. And my slope of up 2 right 1 is the same as down 2 and to the left 1. And when everything is said and done, I have my line, and I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. And this is my equation, y equals 2x plus 1. I'm going to press stop to stop recording, and it's going to give me a preview. If you didn't like this screen chomp, you can click on the trash can and hold it down, and it will delete your screenshot completely. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. I'm going to click on share. It is sending right now and it is creating my file. Now the nice thing about screenshot is it actually creates the video right on their server. When I click on the icon directly next to the little screenshot guy, it tells me that the cloud is preparing my video to share. In working with the students, think about how you could use this to have students actually creating tutorials for other kids. Khan Academy is essentially a collection of tutorials. Why not have the students creating tutorials and creating your own Khan Academy collection? And why don't I go and look at one that has already been created. You're going to look down here in the bottom middle and you have the share button. So you can copy the link and then paste this link into your email or onto your website or whatever. You have the ability to email the link directly to your students and you have the ability to tweet the link. Hopefully this gives you a really good overview of what ScreenChamp can do and it's something hopefully that you'll be able to use in your classroom with your students. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a great day.